This is Jared Horak, and this is my latest handicapping video. And in this video, I'm going to analyze the Grade 1 Pacific Classic at Del Mar, Saturday, September 2nd, 2023. If you're interested in checking out all of my handicapping articles that I've been posting this summer, head on over to todaysracingdigest.com. I've been posting stakes previews, stakes recaps at Saratoga, some stakes recaps from Del Mar, and much, much more. So head on over to todaysracingdigest.com to read those articles, and I am going to do a Pacific Classic article later this week, so stay tuned uh, to that. And I will, in the description in this video, I'll provide links uh, to those handicapping articles. And the um, past performances in this video are provided by todaysracingdigest.com, and now we will get into the analysis of the Pacific Classic. It's going to be the 10th race at Del Mar, Saturday, September 2nd. The Grade 1, one million dollar Pacific Classic for three-year-olds and up, a mile and a quarter on the main track. Scheduled post time 9 p.m. Eastern time. We have a good field size in here. We have some three-year-olds. We have some uh, older horses. Good mix of of contenders in this spot. Uh, beginning with number one, uh, breaking from the rail, Go Rocket Ride, and Mike Smith will ride for Richard Mandela. He was aboard last time uh, when he won the Haskell Stakes. He's only run four times, so he's lightly raced and he has a lot of upside still. His career debut, January 29th at Santa Anita Park in a six furlong maiden special weight event. It was a six horse field. He broke from post two. He broke on top. He got clear. He was a half length in front early. Uh, opening quarter was 22. They were going 44 and change and he opened up by two lengths and he just kept opening up after that and he won by more than five lengths. He had Lasix that day and he was six to one. And that's the last time that he had Lasix because he jumped right into the stakes competition in his next three starts. And he dove right into the deep end in his second career start. He went from a six furlong debut winner to running in the mile in a 16th grade two San Felipe stakes, a Kentucky Derby points race. And he was the favorite in that race. It was a nine horse field. He chased from second. He had post six in that nine horse field. And he, he was right there. He was only a length back and then a half length back. And then he dropped back to third in the stretch, and he ended up finishing second. It was a good, solid effort, a good learning experience in the stakes ranks. Practical Move was already a stakes winner, and he was much more experienced, and he was able to win that race by a couple lengths. Go Rocket Ride was able to hold on to second there. Skinner, who's also in this race, rallied to finish third. And then he got sick after that, so he was not able to run in the Santa Anita Derby. And they gave him a rest, appointed him to a, a summer and fall campaign, and he came back in the affirmed stakes at Santa Anita Park on June 4th, and it was only a five-horse field, and he was the class of that race. He was one to two, and he was able to get out there and stalk the pace from post five, and he was took over in the stretch, and, and he won easily a length and three-quarter victory. Well, that was a good effort. He, he needed that start off the layoff, and he figured to move forward, and his next start was ambitious. They shipped him from the first time because his first three starts at Santa Anita Park they shipped him to Monmouth Park in his fourth career start, a mile in an eighth Haskell Stakes. And in that race from the inside post, he was able to move out nicely. That was the key to success there. Uh, he was able to get uh, from the inside, move towards the outside, sitting a nice stalking trip out in the clear. And he was able to get first run on Mage, uh, uh, the Kentucky Derby winner, and a good closer there. And Mage set a good closing trip, but he couldn't go with Go Rocket Ride in the stretch. He tried to go with that one, couldn't do it, and Go Rocket Ride was able to pull clear, win by a length and three quarters at 12 to 1. So he was a big overlay there. I believe he was 9 to 2 morning line. I thought maybe that kind of would be the price that he would be. They He just slipped through the cracks, and, and he was a, a, a very good price at 12 to 1 that day. It's not going to be 12 to 1 in this spot. And I think they would probably like to try to get the same kind of trip they got last time uh, from the inside post. I'm sure they would like to get him off the rail, stalking. And, and being in a comfortable position. We'll see if Mike Smith's able to do that again. Either way, he's a solid contender. His speed figures continue to improve. He's lightly raced, second time after a layoff here, and he's going to try the mile and a quarter distance for the first time. And I like the distance progression, six furlongs, mile and a sixteenth, mile and an eighth, now a mile and a quarter. And he has a few workouts at Del Mar. He's been working seven furlongs, so they legged him up for this race. Number two, Katona. This is a four-year-old gelding for trainer Doug O'Neill, and he's four for 11 lifetime with two seconds and two-thirds. So he's fairly consistent, but he is 0 for 2 at Del Mar uh, with one second-place finish. And this is his first try at the mile and a quarter distance, and he's going to step way up in class here. He actually broke his maiden in a maiden claiming 40,000. Doug O'Neill claimed him 
out of a maiden claiming 50,000 race in 2021. Then he broke his maiden earlier this year. He missed all of 2022. Six furlong return in January. He was able to win that maiden claiming 40 race by a head. Starter optional claiming at six furlongs. He won that one as well. Disappointed on the turf in his next start. And then back to dirt. Uh, he performed over a route of ground in his last four starts. Three of those at Santa Anita. He had two seconds. And then he had a victory optional claiming one other than on May 27th. And then the Pleasanton Mile last time out. He was the favorite. I liked him in that spot. And he was able to win nicely. He was sitting back in eighth place. He just powered away and he won by more than three lengths. He's clearly a much better horse uh, from the beginning of the year uh, till now. He's much faster now. But this is a big step up in class. And Antonio Frisu is going to get aboard. And he's been riding uh, lights out at, at Del Mar recently. And with uh, Frisu and Doug O'Neill, good jockey trainer team. Uh, so there's some things to like here, but I just think uh, that mile and a quarter distance against this grade one company is probably going to prove a little bit too much for him. Stiletto Boy, that class horse here. He's a five-year-old gelding. He's earned $1.86 million in his career. He's four for 23 with four seconds and nine thirds. Fairly consistent, but Delmar's not his favorite surface. He's 0 for 4 at Delmar with two third place finishes. He has won at this mile and a quarter distance before. He won the Santa Anita Handicap in March at 13 to 1 odds. Probably going to be a decent price here as well. And then in the Oakland handicap, he was a close third. The Stephen Foster last time out at Ellis Park, he ended up finishing sixth after tracking the pace. Hector Zormer is going to ride him back. He knows him well. He gave him a great ride in the Santa Anita handicap, and I think he, that would probably uh, would be the kind of trip he would want in here. He was up close early, and then he was able to lay a bit off the pace, stalk, and then come running in the stretch and, and win by a, a neck over proxy. And Defunded was third there, and Defunded is in this race. Um, Oakland handicap, not a bad effort. He just didn't run his best race in the Stephen Foster. He's fairly consistent. He was in the Pacific Classic last year, but flight line uh, won that one by 19. He was sixth, uh, beating like 36 lengths. In the San Diego, he was a well-beaten third last year. So I just said, it just isn't the surface that he seems to prefer. Uh, but he should at least make an impact uh, on the pace. I think he's going to be at least fairly uh, forwardly placed in this spot. Tripoli, he won this race back in 2021, but he hasn't been... The same horse uh, since then. In 2022, he was 0 for 5. In 2023, he did finally pick up his first victory since the Pacific Classic. That was at Golden Gate Fields, an all-weather allowance route. He was able to win that one by a nose. Then he was third at that same venue in the All-American Stakes. The Pleasanton Mile, he was fourth, beaten six lengths. The San Diego last time, fifth, beaten three lengths in that nine-horse field. He was tracking wide there. He has two bullet workouts for this on August 12th. August 12th and August 19th. So he seems to be training well, and maybe he's getting back to his good form, but he's, uh, I, I still think in, until he finds that good form, I can't really recommend him. Tiago Pereira uh, rode him last time. He's going to ride again. Defunded for trainer Bob Baffert. He is two for six at Del Mar, but he's another one that if you look at his overall form, he's best at Santa Anita Park, and at Del Mar, sometimes he just doesn't run his best race, but he does like this mile and a quarter distance. Three starts with a win, a second, and a third. And in all three of those races at a mile and a quarter, he set the pace. He went out to the front in the Gold Cup in 2022, and he was second there, a clear second. And then his next mile and a quarter race of the Santa Anita Handicap, he went out and set the pace and finished a close third. And then in the Gold Cup of 2023, he set the pace and he kept on going. In the San Diego last time, he was the heavy favorite. He was a flat fourth. So you can see that some, sometimes he'll throw in a clunker at Del Mar. Like last year in the San Diego, he was seventh, beaten eight lengths. In the Pat O'Brien last year, he was sixth, uh, beaten eight lengths there. Um, the Native Diver, he did win that race, a grade three. He was just a class of that field. And then uh, his San Diego last time was flat. So he, he will throw in some flat efforts at Del Mar. Uh, Juan Hernandez knows him well. He's going to ride back. He has a back-to-back -back bullet workouts for this. He can impact the pace, but his stable mate, a three-year-old Arabian Knight is another one that can impact the pace, and you know the two buffer, buffer trainees are not going to be dueling on the lead. Order and Law is next, and he won the grade uh, three Cougar the second last time out, a mile and a half on the main track at Delmar. He stalked the pace, and he won that one nicely under Kent Desarmo, but Kent Desarmo decides he's going to jump over and stick with Stiletto Boy, so Edmund Maldonado is going to ride this one, and he has been aboard before. Uh, but he did not hit the board the three times that Maldonado uh, rode him in 2022 and then 2023. He's two for six at Del Mar. He hasn't started at this distance, but we know he can handle 
a mile and a half because he went that far last time out. I just think he's probably outclassed in here. He's probably going to be sitting somewhere in mid pack, and I don't just I don't think that he can quicken enough. His Cougar the second speed rating wasn't fast enough uh, to threaten this group. Slow down, Andy. He ran a decent race as my top choice in the Grade Two San Diego last time. Got a decent price on him. He almost went off four to one there, and from the inside post, he's had a good tactical trip, and he ended up finishing second. Senior Buscador, who's also in this race, ran him down that day. Um, this one's got some ability. We're going to find out if he wants to go a mile and a quarter. He's run three times at Dalmar, three second place finishes. I don't have a problem with him over this oval, and I like his tactical speed. I'm just not sure that a mile and a quarter is his distance. In the Breeders' Cup third mile last year, he ended up finishing a close third. I think he's more of a miler, and I think that's the kind of race, if he ends up in the Breeders' Cup, that he will probably be targeting. But they're taking a shot in this grade one. And I, I just think just overall... Good tactical trip. I could see him sitting. I just don't know that he has the stamina at the end uh, to outkick these. Senior Buscador certainly has a decent late kick. Again, he's another one, though, that can he sustain his run this mile and a quarter distance. He's had three starts at Del Mar with a win and a third. He's run one time at this distance. The Gold Cup at Santa Anita, he was fifth, beating six lengths in that six-horse field. The funded won that one. And then last time out, he came from far back. He was in a nine-horse field. He was well back. He was 11 lengths back in last. He inhaled the field, and he won by a length and a quarter. Giovanni Franco rode him last time. He was 13 to 1. He's going to be every bit of, of that, I think, in this race. Franco rides back. And I, I just don't know that he can sustain his run against this grade one company at a mile and a quarter. Arabian Knight, a pace factor in here. Very lightly raced. He's the most lightly raced horse in this race. He's only run three times. This is the son of Uncle Mo. Astrology is the damn sire. And in his Keeneland debut last fall on November 5th, he was outstanding at seven furlongs, just getting out there, setting the pace and running away and winning that one by seven lengths. Came back in the grade three Southwest on January 28th. And in the slop that day in mile and a 16th, he got out there, he controlled the pace. He dominated that race by five lengths. And then he came back in the Haskell. I made him my top choice in the Haskell. He was a horse that I've always liked, and I thought maybe he could get out there and control the pace in his return race, but it wasn't meant to be. A long shot got out there. He ended up pressing that one and going too fast early, and then he didn't have enough left in the stretch uh, to go with Go Rocket Ride and Mage, but he was a clear third. He dug in and kept trying at the end. Should have gotten a lot out of that race. He's been uh, training at Del Mar all month long. And I would expect that with Flavian Pratt riding for the first time, uh, he should be all over the pace. Uh, Paroli is next. This one is a gelded son of Battle of Midway. 14 starts, three wins, four seconds and two thirds. He's run twice at Del Mar with one second place finish. And then he's run one time at this distance and he ended up finishing second. That was the Gold Cup, that grade one Gold Cup on May 29th. He was up on the pace. He chased, couldn't uh, quite get past defunded, but he was clearly second best that day in a solid effort. Now second after the layoff, he was in an optional claiming race at, at Del Mar at a mile last time. He was uh, ended, up, ended up wide from off the pace and finishing fourth. He can improve second after a layoff under his new rider, Umberto Rispoli. Uh, Kent Sormo has been riding, uh, but I mentioned he's riding a stiletto boy in this race. He's going to have to pick up his game. I thought the Gold Cup was a much easier spot. This is going to be a much tougher spot. And he was 28 to 1 there. He overperformed. And even if he would run back to that effort, probably not enough to finish even in the top two or three. Then finally, number 11, Skinner. Uh, this one for trainer John Sheriffs. He is a son of Curlin, and he has a lot of upside. He's still eligible for an entry-level allowance race, though. He's only run, won one time in seven starts with a second and three-thirds. He was one that they were uh, high on this horse last year. Five furlong debut at Del Mar. He ended up finishing fifth. He was way back early, and he ended up splitting that 10-horse field at 36-1. to one. Uh, That was just an experienced run for him. Second time out, they threw him right into the Del Mar Futurity, and they ended up rallying uh, from last to finish third there. Uh, that was a decent effort. He was beaten nine lengths. He wasn't close to the top two, but a decent effort nonetheless. They stretched him out in the grade one American Pharaoh. No threat there. He ended up finishing a well-beaten sixth in that eight-horse field. And then that was the end of his uh, two-year-old campaign. Brought him back February of this year in a one-mile maiden special weight event. He dominated that race at Santa Anita from sixth place in a seven-horse field. He rallied. He won going away. He had Lasix that day, and he was strong. His next start was the grade two San Felipe. I mentioned that race with Go Rocket Ride. And he rallied from last place 
to finish third. He had an outer post, good solid finish there. Santa Anita Derby, he ran a good race, and he had a big look at that race. He was uh, at a mile and an eighth. He was rallying from off the pace. He was right there with Practical Move, Mandarin Hero in the stretch. Those three were battling for the win, and Practical Move won by a nose. Mandarin Hero was second, was another half length back uh, to Skinner, and those three were clear of the rest. Good, solid effort in the Kentucky Derby. He was supposed to run. He was entered in the Derby. He was training lights out, heading up to the Derby. Uh, that race would have set up for him, but uh, he got sick. He couldn't run in that race. And then they tried to bring him back for the affirmed. John Sheriffs wasn't happy with the way he was training, so he scratched there as well. And then he finally did return in the Los Al Derby at a mile and an eighth on July 8th at Los Al. And in a five-horse field, he was tracking wide. He was a few lanes back, but Reincarnate was just out there controlling the pace. 47 and 3, 111 and 4. And Reincarnate just dominated that race. He won easily by two and a quarter lengths. Skinner, clearly second best. Show finisher Prince Abu Dhabi was a next out winner. A reincarnate has not run back yet. They considered him for the Travers, but they ended up skipping that race. They're going to run reincarnate in the Pennsylvania Derby, and Skinner shows up in this spot. I think the extra ground could be to his liking. He's bred to go this far. Uh, we're just going to have to see how good he is in here. Um, he's always been, as I said, highly regarded. And he's one that can get involved from off the pace, but he's certainly going to need some pace help in this spot. Then Hector Berrios is going to ride him for the first time. So Skinner from off the pace, certainly possible. Um, obviously, go rocket ride from the inside post if he can work out a good tactical trip. And I don't think that they want that inside ground saving trip. I think they want to try to duplicate that trip they got from the Haskell. And if he can do that, certainly interesting. Defunded's one that he's run well in multiple stakes races, uh, the Gold Cup of, of 2022 and 2023, uh, the Grade 1 Awesome again, he won that one last year, the Native Diver at Grade 3, he won that one, he was second in the Pegasus World Cup, Santa Anita Handicap at close third, Californian, he won that race, the Gold Cup uh, Grade 1 of this year, he won that one, the San Diego, he was a flat fourth. So he's run well in multiple stakes races, and out of, out of all the older horses, He's the most consistent, and he would probably have a shot to finish somewhere uh, in the mix. And slow down, Andy. I like him, but I just don't like him in a mile and a quarter. I don't think Senor Buscador wants to go this far. I think his run's going to flatten out. I'm going to go with Arabian Knight again. I got to give him a second chance in his second start after a layoff. That Haskell was his first start since January, so he was off from January to July. And one of the things I really liked about his effort that day is he got up on a fast pace, and then he took the lead, and then he was passed by Go Rocket Ride and Mage, and it looked like he might throw in the towel, but he didn't. He dug in, and he kept trying all the way to the end, and he finished a clear third, held off everybody else, and he wasn't losing ground uh, to the top two uh, late in the race. So Arabian Knight should have gotten plenty out of that race, and now in his second start after a layoff with Flavian Pratt getting aboard. They paid $2.3 million for the son of Uncle Mo, and I can certainly see him getting out there and possibly controlling the pace in here. If you look at it, you have a lot of horses with tactical speed, like Go Rocket Ride, like Stiletto Boy. Uh, even Defunded can show some tactical speed. Order in Law, more of a mid-pack type. Slow Down Andy has some tactical speed, but there's nobody that really likes to get out there and set the pace, but Arabian Knight does because he did exactly that in his first two starts, and then he was all over a fast pace in the Haskell last time. So I think at a mile and a quarter with a more controlled pace, he should be fitter, second after a layoff, and I think that Arabian Knight can wire the field in the Grade 1 Pacific Classic. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment if you like this horse racing content. And again, you have, you're going to have to go over to todaysracingdigest.com this week. Uh, later this week, I'm going to have an article to go along with this video where I'm going to break down uh, even uh, more this Pacific Classic race. So check that handicapping article out later this week at todaysracingdigest.com. And until I see you next time, good luck at the races.